There are already two Jeffs in the online whiskey world, myself and the amazing G Whiskey Jeff, yet there is a new one trying to elbow their way in. Some nobody called Jeff Bezos with Amazon's own rage of whiskey. So it's only fair to see what the space cowboy Lex Luthor has to offer. And at £12 a bottle, let's see if it soars better than his phallic shaped rocket. Go Jeff, go Mark, go Wally, go Oliver, you are going to space. Oh my god, it looks like a huge... Pecker! Oh wow. Wait, that's not a word pecker, it looks like someone's... Thanks for joining me whiskey people. I'm Jeff, this is Whiskey, let's crack on. Jeff Whisker. Yes, you heard that right. I paid £12 for this bottle. £12.86 to be precise. Only Imperial Stormtroopers are so precise. Which honestly was worth a punt to that price. It also meant I could make all sorts of Dr. Evil jokes throughout this review. And I am not joking. Now, I want to say it's pronounced Tovez or Tovez, but do let me know if I'm wrong. Most likely I am. From my little digging around, I saw someone mention that it was a brand name owned by William Grants. However, I don't believe they have any Isla distilleries. And also on the HMRC UK website, the brand states it's owned by Amazon. So yeah, there's not a lot more we can say about this Isla single malt. It's 40% ABV, it's chill filtered, it's got color added, which I don't think is a shock to anyone. But let's dive in on the experience. While online people have confirmed it's got added colour, I'm 99% sure it is chill filtered as when this was delivered it was the old Amazon special. Where this was left on the front door back when we had frozen temperatures and bringing it in there wasn't even a hint of any haze. Scotch mist. Scotch mist, Dag, but what scotch mist? One moment while I cross fertilise the data, According to my printout, Scotch Mist is an evil Highland force, the ghost of Scottish warriors trapped in foggy mist. However, outside the liquid, the bottle itself is pretty smart. It has got a great chunky cork, thick and weighty squat bottle, and the label itself looks pretty decent. It even does a better job than the new Talisker bottles with the custom label shape. You know no one likes you, right? Now, any outside marketing for this bottle is non-existent. I imagine it's gonna do well in the old slap slap. <laughs> has this slap thing gone a bit weird? No, people won't take it too far. This is Aaron, the quarter cask, the bothy. It's a dirty, rugged dram. It just makes you want to slap it. Just, yeah, yeah, just, yeah, it's nice. You like it? Yeah, you dirty dram. You are dirty, aren't you? You're nasty. Dirty, you rugged mother. Based on the look of it alone, I'm going to give it three out of six jets. But now it's time to test the whiskey. It goes on the nose. If you're a Kalila fan like me, straight away you get those soft smoke peaches. I'm not saying that it is from there, as I have other ideas when I taste it. There's lots of dried fruit, it's cereally, it's like that fancy fruity granola. It's certainly on the subtle side, and it's got some impressive depth to it. There's like a burnt rosemary kind of in there. Oh, it's really reminds me of um, air fried bubble and squeak. Now, Mr. Bubble and Squeak, you may enlighten me. Not sure how international that is, but it's where you mash all the leftover veg together and cook it up. It's better than it sounds. Yeah, while quite soft and subdued, there's quite a lot going on there and I'm really enjoying it. It's gonna have to be four out of six Jeffs. So let's see how it does in the taste. Cheers. Why am I doing this left-handed? Cheers again. Okay, this really lets it down. I forgot just how thin it is. It's really smooth cold, almost flavourless, like you dug out an ice pole from the back of the freezer and it's just got no juice or flavour in it at all. Enjoy. There is no flavour. After the second sip, maybe I take that back. There's some like, a little bit of bitter peat. There's like a bit of fudge. There's that mineral rock licking dustiness. 
and it comes in with that medicinal peat. Um, it actually reminds me a lot of Laphroaig. Imagine if you had the standard Laphroaig 10, which is 40% ABV in the UK, and you've left it in a glass for a day or so, and it's come down a few levels. It's quite earthy, uh, apples covered in dirt. It's all faint, but if you root around, there's some bits you can pull out of it. There is a slight menthol finish, and it's possibly the lightest peated whiskey I think I've ever had in terms of finish. All right, looking back, it could have been like a fresh space side. Personally, I dig it, it's just a shame it's so thin but maybe that's part of its charm and a way to kind of keep it so cheap. I am tempted to give it a four as I'm really into my lighter, fresher whiskies at the moment. I knew he'd gone too far, even by his own standards. But I think a high three Jess will do because I don't think this is everyone's cup of tea, especially if you're into like your thick peaty bombs. So yeah, three out of Jess and the taste. So it's time to talk money. What's the value of this bottle? So as I said, £12. In my view, this is well worth that. It is an Amazon only bottle and it does seem to fluctuate on price. Uh, the highest I've seen was £24 and there often is extra discounts available. If we base on £18, which it commonly hangs at, I think it's worth a pop. Also, if you're new and you haven't dipped your toe into Isla Peak, this is a pretty risk-free and super gentle way of putting your toe in the water. Or maybe you're just better off diving in head first and going for like a Lefroy cash rent. Go big or go home, right bud? Either way, in the future when my collection has dwindled, I would possibly pick this up again for like an easy everyday sipper to share with people. And on that basis, I was going to have to get a pretty impressive 5 out of 6 Jeffs on the value. So the final score is hitting pretty big and it's coming out of 15 out of 24 Jeffs. And that's beating quite a few other bottles. It certainly won't blow your mind, but it knows how to punch for its price. And I think it does a good job of going after its target market. So if you've enjoyed this review or found it useful, slap a like. If you've hated it, give it a dislike. I am somehow getting close to that big YouTube partner target, which will help me improve the content further. So if you're new, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know about your whiskey journey. So all that's left is thanks for watching and cheers to the next one. That's dangerously easy.